We are all very familiar with equations ever since we started to learn math. Equations indicate that two quantities are equal to each other. It could be as simple as this: three plus four equals to seven. Then we learned these types of equations with so-called unknowns. The unknown is most commonly represented by letter x, although it could be represented in other ways, such as y, w, alpha, beta, gamma, etc. What's common about these three equations is that they all only have one unknown, and we also learned how to solve for these unknowns from the equations. And these are known as solutions to the equations. And notice that in each case, we only have limited numbers of solutions. And just as a reminder, a solution means that if we plug the number back into the equation, the equation is mathematically correct. Now, please answer this question. As I mentioned earlier. The equations we have learned so far normally only have one unknown, and we are able to find the limited number of solutions that satisfy the equation. Now let's look at equations with two variables, like this one, x plus y equals to four. There are two variables, x and y, and think about what variable means. It means that it varies; it is not for certain. In this case, let's think for a moment what x and y values could satisfy this equation. Well, x could be zero, y equals to four, or x could be one and y is three. X and y could both be two, or x is negative two and y is six. The list goes on and on. In fact, we can quickly conclude that the list is limitless. In other words, there are infinite number of x and y values that could satisfy this equation. However, of course, x and y cannot be arbitrary. For example, apparently x and y cannot both be three since three plus three is six, not four. Therefore, x and y must be somehow related. So, to help visualize this relationship between x and y. Let's try to graph it on the Cartesian plane that we just recently learned. Let's first rewrite this equation. The purpose is that now we can arbitrarily choose x values and then use this equation to calculate what the respective y values should be, since y must always be four minus x. In fact, let's be more organized and do this with a table. I want to choose x values to be, say, from negative two to positive five, and from this new equation, I can easily calculate the corresponding y values as such, since y is four minus x. And now I got these ordered pairs of numbers that look very much like the coordinates of points that we learned very recently. So we can plot these coordinates on the Cartesian plane. And these points are known as the solution points to the equation x plus y equals to four. This is because if you plug in the x and y coordinates back into the equation, the equation is mathematically valid. It looks to us that these points all fall on a straight line, so let's draw a line to connect them. Now. This line is the graph of the equation x plus y equals to four. We know that a line is made up of infinite number of points, and this line is the collection of all the solution points to this equation. You might find this very simple, but still there are several notes I must stress. The points that we first plotted. Only represent a couple of specific solution points to the equation. They don't represent the graph of the equation. It is the line that represents the graph of the equation. As we discussed, there are unlimited numbers of solution points to this equation, and the line segment that you see here is only a part of the graph. You should imagine that the actual graph extends way beyond the background. In fact, in this case. It extends to both positive and negative infinity. Of course, it won't fit inside this slide, and also it is not necessary to graph it that way. 
and any point on this line, even those that we didn't calculate earlier, represents a solution point to the equation. For example, if we could reach the coordinates of this point or this point, we can easily tell that these pairs of xy coordinates also satisfy the equation. And lastly, obviously any point not on the line is not a solution point to this equation. So what we did earlier is known as the point plotting method to sketch the graph of an equation with two variables. Let's summarize the steps. Say if we want to graph this equation, we want to visualize how x and y relate to each other as governed by this equation. Step one, rewrite the equation so we can choose the values for one variable and calculate the corresponding values of the other. Step two, make a table, pick some values for x, make sure you cover a reasonable range from negatives to positives, and then calculate the corresponding y values. As we discussed, these are the xy coordinates of the solution points to the equation. Step three, plot the solution points on the rectangular coordinate system. Step four, draw a smooth curve through these points. And this curve is the graph of the equation. Again, this curve extends beyond the background. It is the collection of all solution points, infinite number of them, to the equation. And from this curve, we can visualize how the y values change with the x values. So this is the point plotting method. It is the most basic method of graphing an equation. Later in this class, as you learn new graphing skills, you might find this method time consuming, but always keep in mind that it is the most reliable. Now please answer this question.